everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I feel like I've been making a lot of informative videos lately, so I really wanted to make today's video a fun one. So you may notice that I'm in a slightly different place today and that's because I'm going to be doubling up my rat's cage and transforming it into a much bigger cage. So this cage I have behind me is the Fur Plus for Rat Plus and these are great cages. A lot of people use these when they're first starting out and getting rats and these make great cages for about two rats. Obviously I have one adult rat and two babies in here so I don't really want to keep three rats in here so that's why I'm going to be stacking the two of these that I have today on top of each other to make an even bigger cage. So the two cages that I have I bought for about £40 second hand and this is a really good price considering when they are combined it's going to be about an £80 cage which is a really good price considering a lot of larger cages are about £200 sometimes so it's a great alternative if you are low on money or you have two of these already but you just want to combine together to make an even bigger cage. So I've already cleaned this cage out, um, I'm going to be using the bottom of this cage and all the substrate in there for the main cage and then I just need to take everything out of here to use it in the final combined cage. So there's about three ways that people combine these cages and I'm going to be using one of them, hopefully it works, if not I'll have to use a different method. But the first method that people use to combine these cages is they will take the tray from the second cage, my second cage is over there, they'll take the second one of these and take this lid off the top and then just slot this tray into here and they'll probably cut like a hole here to join the two cages together and then obviously have the second cage stacked up here, the wire part of it. Now the second method people use is, I don't know if you can see, but it has this kind of piping to join the metal bit of the cage together and a lot of people will cut these in half and then pretend this lid's not here. When they are stacking the metal bits together they'll kind of place this pipey bit <laughs> They'll place this pipe bit between the two bits of metal where it's joining, I'm not explaining this very well at all, to make it secure and hold the two wire bits of the cage together. Now I personally don't have any equipment to cut these plastic bits, so I'm going to try and do it without having to cut these. There is a slight gap here where I can just stack the extra bits of tube onto the top, hopefully you'll see what I mean when I do it. And then I'm just going to use a lot of zip ties to make it secure and join the two cages together. Hopefully this works, I've seen a lot of people on Facebook do this successfully and make a really good large cage for the rats, so without further ado I'm going to go and join the two cages together. Before I do that though I am just going to pop the rats into their carrier so that they're not in the way. We're getting heavy. Okay, so this is all emptied out and I always get a lot of questions about what bedding I use and it always changes because I'm really fussy about what bedding I'm using. But right now the bedding I'm using is called Finicard, Finicard, I never know how to pronounce it. It's basically just shredded cardboard and it's okay, I'm getting on okay with it, I like it a lot more than the bedding I was using before. So if anyone was wondering what bedding I'm using, I'm just using shredded cardboard. The cage comes with this which slots into all of the corners like this and you just want to take these off and then you're left with a gap like this which is where you'll put the poles from the other cage onto here and then slot the two cages together. So we've just stacked the two cages together and this is how it looks, it's massive. And then this is where the two poles are joined together and it's surprisingly sturdy actually, I haven't zip tied it yet, I'm going to do that next, but it's surprisingly sturdy with just this little bit of join here. And then I've just put the clip things back on the top of the top layer of the cage. They obviously don't slot into the pole like they should, but it's fine. It just makes it a little bit more sturdy, which is good. So the two cages are now zip tied together and I have added the lid on the top and now it's time for the fun part of adding all the toys and accessories in. So this is everything 
I have to put in and it's quite a lot so I think it's going to take me quite a while. But I'll do a nice little time lapse for you so you can watch me putting all this stuff in. So starting at the bottom on the left we have this little blue hut and if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that this is Rolo's favourite little hut and I just need to add some shredded tissue paper into this to make it a little bit more comfortable and then into the middle is this ball and this is actually a treat ball and they've chewed this quite a bit that you can put treats in here to hide them and it has different like difficulty settings. Oh my god Sunday! Hi! And then over in this corner is the litter tray and then over here is a lava ledge which if you don't know is good for keeping their claws down and sometimes they can also chew these as well. And then we just have a water bottle on the front. And then at the back, hello, at the back we have this blue tube that's just attached to the side and then towards the left side of the cage we have these blue wooden chew toys that are just made in kind of like a step formation kind of thing attached to the side of the cage. Moving up slightly we have towards the left hand side just some wooden snowflake chews and then if you can see underneath this ladder is a hammock that my boyfriend made because we have no gender roles in this household and then above this is a wooden ladder which I've shown in one of my haul videos recently which just has 
hanging chew toys on this. So in the middle we have this... <laughs> Hi! In the middle we have this rope which is actually quite sturdy and it's attached to the front and the back of the cage for them to walk along. And then next to this is one of my favourite things, I always buy them for their cage, which is just a simple wooden bridge. And then at the back is another snowflake chew. Guys! So moving over to the top left hand corner of the cage, we have one of these and I'll link everything that I am including in this that I can in the description and I love these too, they're good for hiding vegetables in and they really have to work on getting them out of the pot of this. So then back here we have their food in a bowl and then in that back corner is just a bowl of water. I do plan on putting a litter tray on this shelf but I don't have one right now because they do tend to pee on these shelves which is quite disgusting. So if you put a litter tray in the back corner of this it should prevent them from peeing over the <laughs> entire shelf. And then up in the corner there we just have a, another water bottle. And then this is something that I was planning on putting in Vic's cage but it's too big to put in his cage. And it's just this wooden hanging, I don't really know how to describe it, it was a bird toy originally. And I didn't really think they would actually use this that much, but when I had it hanging in the cage before this, they did actually use it to climb on the different sections which was good. So then moving on to the back, I probably haven't attached this the best that I could but it will do for now and it's just this flexible flexible tube and I've just zip tied this to the back of the cage. So then moving on to the top of the cage we have this hammock and I've run out of hooks to hang the hammocks but usually it's a bit more spread out and this hammock is just in the shape of a boat I think and again we just have this wooden toy that I've hung from the top and then moving on round <laughs> we have another hammock that my boyfriend has made them. Hello Sprout. Really? Really? Come here. Really? <laughs> and then right at the top is their Sputnik or I think in America you call them space pods which I always put in the cage anyway. Excuse me sir, come back. So that is it for everything I have in my cage. I will probably add a few more things into here as time goes on, but luckily there is enough space now that I can add extra things in there for them. And I think they're really enjoying having a lot more space, <laughs> but yet they still want to come out and play with me, which is good. Um, I am a little bit worried about Rolo because he is quite old now. I think I've layered it. <laughs> you are so distracting. I think I've laid it in a way that if he does fall from the top, he's not going to go straight down to the bottom. He's going to have different layers and levels and stuff that he can land on if he is a little clumsy and does end up falling. He's not going to go straight down to the bottom, which obviously is a good thing. So it's quite a few hours later and I'm finally done with this cage. I'm quite happy with how it turned out and they seem to be really happy having a lot more space to run around and be themselves. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you and I'd like to ask you to leave any questions you have for a future Q&A down in the comments section about me, my animals or anything random that you want to ask. I will be replying to any comments about this cage and how to set it up and put it together but apart from that, any of the comments I will be saving for a video so please leave your questions below and I will try to answer them in a future video. Subscribe if you want to see more animal related videos and we'll see you in our next video. Bye!